What's up, Porsche fanatics? Will here with Ren Enthusiast, my YouTube channel that is all about air-cooled Porsche 911 ownership experience. And in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through the enhancements, the modifications, the improvements that we are making to my 1969 Porsche 911 T hot rod. Before I get into that though, I wanna share a little bit of really kind of sad news. I um, lost my camera bag that had my drone and my microphones and an old GoPro and a Sony camera in it. Um, I was on a group drive up in the mountains uh, a couple weeks back now and um, we were at this scenic overlook. I shot some drone footage of the cars, put the drone up and left the bag sitting there. Uh, when I reached my destination later that evening, I realized the bag wasn't there. I raced back um, and unfortunately the bag was gone. Surprise, surprise. So hasn't been returned as of yet. I do not hold out hope for that to happen. So I went ahead and ordered a new drone. Talk about a real kick to the stomach and microphones as well. I share that with you only to tell you that uh, I won't, I will clearly not have like any good drone footage, any new drone footage anytime soon, but really the biggest pain point is there will be bad audio in the next few videos, including this one. So I just wanted to give you guys insight into the kind of things that can happen to dudes who are not paying attention and who have YouTube channels and camera gear. Um, to jump forward into happier times today, myself and Eric Lynn, my friend and mechanic will be talking to you guys through how we are taking my already killer 69T hot rod and making it better, more sound, more bulletproof. I think you'll find it interesting. Uh, so before I jump into that though, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy air-cooled Porsche content, then this is the place for you. Let us now jump into the main event. Okay guys, here it is in current state, my 69 911T hot rod. And uh, as I promised in my intro video of this car, I would share with you all what exactly I'm going to do with this vehicle. So first of all, as the car came to me, I think it's in great condition. So there's nothing really wrong with this car. Um, that's not why I'm making changes to it. Some of these changes we're gonna be talking about in a moment are cosmetic in nature. They're just kind of like based on my preference, but there is a little bit of work we're doing to this engine here to take an already great car and make it better and a little bit uh, improved in terms of how the engine works. So. That's the setup. I am sitting here with Eric Lind of Sports Purpose Garage, and he's the guy who's been doing the work on the car. Um, so Eric, do you wanna talk a little bit about your background and then we'll jump into the information on the car? Sure, yeah, I've been in the Porsche world for a while. Uh, I've got a big shop out in California that my partner's running now. And, uh, and we basically build air-cooled hot rods. Um, so one of the things that I get really excited about are cars like this that have a lot of history. It's an old R group car. Uh, it was purchased and then restored to this beautiful condition by uh, Charles, another R group member. And uh, as a fellow R group guy, like it, it excites me to be able to kind of put the finishing touches on this car and get it back out into the wild and, and get it used properly by uh, Mr. Brooks here. All right, man, let's jump now into the specifics of what we're doing. Sure. And also, if you just try to stick with me with this mic here, because as we all, <laughs> as we all know, I foolishly lost all of my equipment. Major fail. Uh, okay, so basically what I did was sort of assess the car, we drove the car, the car's pretty awesome in general. Um, made a couple of internal cosmetic changes, which we'll look at later. Uh, but the big deal was pop the motor out for a couple of reasons. Number one, it had a, a green shroud on it, which was consistent with it being a 76S base motor. The green and the blue didn't work. The car used to be silver, so it was probably okay, but now that it's blue, it was pretty gross. Um, so we wanted to get the NFI off. I cleaned all of that up and uh, resprayed the shroud blue. Uh, also sent all the tins out to get Cerakoted, uh, restored the fan, which is also being Cerakoted. And uh, we're using an RSR engine mount, which has some cool holes in it just for some visual effect. Um, the other reason for pulling it out was to give me a little better access to all the wiring. The wiring was kind of gross in the car. It was. Uh, a little bit here and there. Other folks had worked on it over the years. Wanted to clean all that up, tidy it up. And most importantly, um, this engine was built uh, with a 10.5 to one compression ratio, S cams, uh, all the right stuff was done to it. My ollies, you know, shuffle pinning and drilling the crank and all the good stuff. However, for some reason they left it single plug, um, which 
is fine if you run race gas all the time. It's a little dicey on the street, uh, especially with a distributor and a, and a standard CDI uh, ignition system. So barring pulling the whole thing apart and twin plugging it, the best thing we could do was give it a proper and precise ignition setup, uh, which generally is an XDI setup from Cluet. Of course, Electromotive's been out of business now for six months, but I was able to scramble and I found a setup that I had in the shop in California. And so we're doing that. So it's gonna be a crank triggered ignition with an XDI setup. You can see the coil packs and whatnot in there. Uh, it'll give us way more precise timing control uh, and, and the ability to, to tailor the timing map to the engine. Uh, and make it a whole lot more safe uh, to run on the street with pump gas. So Eric, you know, and I experienced this, but I don't know that I have the language for it, but under under full power at certain RPMs, the car would, I don't know if I'd call it stumble, but it definitely like showed up in an odd way. What was that called? Yeah, so you were getting a little bit of detonation, uh, which was essentially trying to go to full throttle at a fairly low RPM uh, where it just basically wasn't happy. You didn't have enough ignition power to deal with the compression of the fuel. We're gonna solve that and dial a car in so that it's not an issue. Got it, and that's the purpose of the upgraded ignition. Correct, system. Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. So what else are we working on? Um, I cleaned up some of the fuel system stuff. Um, also, the way this MFI was configured, it doesn't really have an overrun solenoid that's working and it didn't really have any sort of a priming setup. Um, so we rewired the priming solenoid, which was in the engine bay. And basically what that will do is it will allow on a button, I'll show you here, these guys sit up here and this is a fuel line. And basically you hit a button and it squirts fuel down in the venturis to sort of prime the pump, kind of like pumping the gas on a carbureted car. Would. But it'll be a button. But it'll be a button. Which correct. buttons are always... Cool. Buttons are awesome. It makes it like an F1 or a car or <laughs> some sort of fighter jet. I don't know. And that's pretty much it for the engine. I mean, it, the thing ran great. It had good compression. Um, it had good leak down. So it really didn't need a whole lot of anything, as Will said. It was just mostly cleaning stuff up, uh, improving the ignition, and um, just making it all kind of flow with the rest of the car. So that's the, uh, the motor end of things. Why don't we see what changes have occurred inside already? I talked about this a bit in my intro video, um, putting this wrench shift short shift kit Correct. into the car. And this is my first experience, by the way, with wrench shift. I have a Wevo in my 86. So I know that you're super high on the wrench shift stuff. I've loved these things uh, since uh, Jay West started making them. Uh, that's why we're a dealer. Um, I feel like you get kind of the best bang for your buck with these. They're spring loaded to center. Um, all build material, you can choose color, you can choose stick length. So if you're a taller guy or you sit further back in the car, you can get a two inch longer rod, which is kind of cool. Um, and then we also used a Stomsky Racing CV style coupler uh, in the tunnel, uh, which is probably exposed if you want to poke your head back there. Uh, and basically what that does is just improve the, uh, uh, further improve the precision of the shifting. So this was a great shifting 901 to begin with. Uh, it has a short stack in two, three, and four, which is awesome with this engine. Uh, and it actually shifted really well for a stock shifted 901, but this just made it a little bit nicer. I agree. So I probably, I drove it stock for an hour. I got a sense and a feel for what it was like to do that. Um, but I, I then drove it with this setup on it and it was way better. And so by the way, guys, before you start messaging me and asking me where you can get one, Eric, we can put a link to this product yeah. in the description. So absolutely or give me a call. I'm, I'm happy to help. Oh yeah. We'll put hey we'll put Eric's <laughs> contact information his personal cell phone number Maybe in the you description. Buy it from somebody you might as well buy it from me, right? Yeah there you go. All right. So we swapped out the steering wheel and this is a little bit larger, right? Yeah this is about uh, 20 millimeters larger than the small prototypo that was in the car. Mm -hmm. uh, it came from the great folks at Zuffenhausen, uh, another R group uh, owned business. And um, they basically reproduced the flat face early Momo uh, with the correct solid hub as well. So all of that is, is super period correct. Um, the flat face, I really dig on early cars. It's really kind of the right wheel. Uh, and the diameter is, again, kind of more proper for, uh, for these cars. Let's see the gauges a little better also. And speaking of gauges, I asked in the intro video about the blue tack and I got mixed 
mixed results on that. We were talking about doing the face in Aussie to match the paint. I have decided largely because it's what I want to do, not because what guys tell me to do with my own car, but I I've decided it should be blue. Yeah. Eric's, <laughs> Eric's a blue guy. I'm going to go with like, stock but we are going to re have these restored i should say Who, who's going to do that work yeah so john bell is going to get the gauges um you've got a couple things going on number one the tax obviously the wrong tack it's not a silver dot tack we're going to make it a 10,000 rpm tack as the early race cars had just because it's cool uh, but do it in the standard style uh, restore all the needles so they're all the same color make it a silver dot because that's what it should be and then we're also going to restore um, this gauge. This is a later gauge because the 69 just had the sort of basic warning gauge, didn't have the oil level and stuff in it. So uh, we'll make this into a silver dot gauge uh, with the right look and restore the bezels and everything. So it'll be perfect and we'll look awesome in the car. Okay. What else, man? I feel like, well, first of all, I'm knocking stuff over there. What, uh, what else are we working on? I feel like there's more here, but... Well, we swapped out the seat belts. Um, so it had harnesses in it, which were a little bit cumbersome and you're gonna leave those in there or have you fully so what I've done is I've left the driver's side hooked up so that should you decide to get super aggressive or go to the track you can run the the four-point harness in the car for a little better um, hold down but mm -hmm. by and large you're gonna use a three-point anyway and, and these all clip in so if you want to take them out for aesthetic reasons you can throw them in the trunk or something that's cool Okay, so I want to enter the world of seat debate. <laughs> so, guys, if you are still watching this, I would love to hear your opinions on these seats and really the direction that I should take. So I'm going to put an image up of the two seats that I'm trying to decide between. And Eric and I have had spirited debates back and forth on which one is the right solution for me. If you've been watching the channel, then you know I am, like, hell-bent on having reclinable seat backs. And so <laughs> one of the options um, to replace these seats with does have reclining seats however the fixed back seats look better and they're period correct they're more correct for this car so, right. so tell me tell me why you're so hell-bent on the fixed back because <laughs> you love how they look well look the original r cars all race cars um they had fixed back seats um and for a number of reasons one weight was a certain was a, a concern and two just general support and strength um my concern is that hey these these ls ricardos are really nice seats They've got great lateral bolsters. The the bottom seat bolsters are kind of poor, but that's just how they were built. Is that, so that's how they were built. That's not yeah, just from years of getting mashed down. Correct. Well, it's a combination of the two, but they didn't have a big bolster to begin with. Yeah. Uh, and they're kind of a wide seat. Uh, and if you're a narrow guy, they're, they're not doing much to keep your butt in place. Yeah. Um, so, so my concern with the aftermarket reclining seats is that it's not going to be tremendously different. You might get some better side bolster, but you're still dealing with a fairly heavy seat. Um, and really the recliners to me just don't look right in the early cars uh, when you're trying to do a sports purpose build like this. So guys, um, you know, I will do the, the reveal on the decision. I'm close to making the decision, but but there's that. And by the way, these recliners will be available for sale once we make the decision. In our and they are lovely seats. They're yeah. really nice. They're very comfortable uh, and everything works. They're cool. And this is new um, corduroy too, by the way. So Charles, the guy who built this, um, put those in there. So... What else, man? Are you so you, overall? You've been telling me that you were satisfied with the condition. Everything you're finding is, is is solid, and you're happy with it. Yeah, I mean the car is is pretty great. Charles did an excellent job uh, and used the right people to to deal with you know new sheet metal on the floors and the paint and body works great. Um, you know most of what we're doing is, is either cosmetic or designed to improve uh, the performance or the longevity of the of the package. Um, on the other side, if you want to swing around over here, I started working on the oil cooler setup. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another thing that we're adding. So this 2.8 has a uh, built-in oil cooler on the engine, uh, which is okay, but really not suited for super spirited driving, especially here uh, where it gets quite hot and humid. The car was built in New England, so it was probably way sufficient for there, but not for here. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we've added a 44 row cooler up front, which I managed to weasel into the, the front fender area without having to cut the battery box out. Uh, it's got a little small fan on it, so that'll help. It doesn't have maybe the best airflow because the battery box is in the way, um, but that cooler with a fan and we're going to be running the elephant finned oil lines, um, all of that combined and the fact that it still has an engine mounted oil cooler, uh, it'll be overkill. It'll have plenty of cooling and uh, we won't have to worry about the oil getting too hot and we all know that you know mad case engines don't like to be hot 
very often where they start leaking like sieves. So this will help prevent that from happening in the future. The last thing I want to mention are like wheels. We have um, ordered and received yes. new wheels, which guys, I'm telling you, in my eyes look freaking amazing. But uh, what I'm going to do is not reveal those to you just yet. <laughs> just yet. So uh, if you're new to this channel, definitely subscribe so you can see the grand uh, reveal on the wheels. Eric, man, I appreciate all the insight, all the work yeah. you're doing. It's been a pleasure working with you, man. So communicative and so low to no drama. Many thanks, my friend. Yeah, man. All right, guys. Thanks for watching if you're still with me.